Everyone knows the General Motors Company, the largest automaker in the USA. It's famous all over the world and has more than a 100 year long history. But today, we're not talking about it. What we're actually talking about today is the General Motor Company's subsidiary, GMC. And no, they're not the same. The abbreviation for the first one is GM. See, the difference in the names is subtle, but it's still there. In the very beginning of its journey in 1901, GMC was an independent company and had a totally different name, Grabowski Motor Company. It was named after its founders, the brothers Max and Morris Grabowski. Their vision was to manufacture delivery and pickup trucks for commercial business. Their first prototype was a single-cylinder engine that failed, but that didn't let it stop them. However, this name didn't stay for long, and in 1902, it was changed to Rapid Motor Vehicle Company. This name represented not the founders, but the product of the company, the Rapid, the first commercial truck operated in Detroit. In 1902, Rapid was made up of not much more than a seat, engine cover, and a frame. By 1904, Rapid would turn out 75 trucks from a factory in Pontiac, Michigan. In 1908, Rapid Motor Vehicle Company attracted the attention of General Motors founder William C. Durant. He began buying up Rapid stock and the company soon found itself being represented by GM's sales force. GM was growing quickly and brought Rapid fully under the corporate umbrella in 1909, the year that a Rapid truck made headlines by climbing to the top of Pikes Peak. In 1911, General Motors formed the General Motors Truck Company and folded Rapid and Reliance Motor Car Company, another early commercial vehicle manufacturer that Durant had acquired in 1908, into it. In 1912, the Rapid and Reliance names were dropped in favor of GMC. All General Motors truck production was consolidated at the former Rapid Motor Plant 1 in Pontiac, Michigan. The GMC nameplate made its first appearance at the New York Auto Show in 1912 and it didn't take long for the company to start earning attention. In 1916, William Warwick drove a GMC truck carrying a ton of Carnation canned milk from Seattle, Washington to New York and back. The one and a half ton model was on the road a total of 21 weeks and went more than 9,500 miles. 50 years later, professionals driving 1966 GMC trucks retraced Warwick's route. The same trip took them only six days. When the First World War broke out, it affected GMC as well as everything and everyone else. The company's three-quarter ton Model 16 became the U.S. Army's standard AA truck during 1917. It served proudly, mostly as a battlefield ambulance. GMC also contributed searchlight trucks, cargo trucks, and troop carriers to the war effort. By 1918, more than 90% of GMC truck production was for military use. GMTC provided a total of 8,512 trucks to the U.S. government during the war years and earned a Distinguished Service Award. In 1923, GMC trucks were exported to Japan to help recovery and reconstruction as a result of the Great Kanto Earthquake and the company continued to provide vehicles as the transportation infrastructure was rebuilt. Before the earthquake struck, most of Japan's transportation of commerce and people was by wooden carts and government-owned railroads, which were severely damaged when the train tracks were twisted beyond use. Autonomous trucks were much more effective at traveling to heavily damaged areas and proved themselves very useful. In 1925, General Motors' top management noticed that bus manufacturing was a fast-growing business. The executives engineered a merger with Yellow Cab Manufacturing Company of Chicago. This led to the formation of Yellow Truck and Coach Manufacturing Company with the General Motors Truck Company as a subsidiary. GMC once again ended up in a subdued position. But nothing could stop GMC from developing and setting new records. Other milestones achieved by the company's trucks built up their reputations and sales. During 1927, Cannonball Baker broke all the records for an Atlantic to Pacific run by driving a six-cylinder powered GMC two-ton tanker from New York to San Francisco in five days and 17 and a half hours. 
Four years later, a refrigerated GMC trunk and trailer operated by Southern California Freight Lines carried the first transcontinental shipment of refrigerated produce in 117 hours. Sales struggled during the Great Depression, but innovators such as cab over engine models in 1934 were still made. During the 1930s, GMC made everything from half-ton pickups to 10-ton trucks to trailer chassis and used every opportunity to develop production and improve an already good reputation. One important new model was the Suburban Carry-All, which combined car-like convenience with the utility of a truck. Two-tone trucks with Art Deco, Stream Style, and Duotone color design were a big hit in 1937, especially new cab-over engine models mentioned before. Once the United States joined World War II, GMC once again shifted their focus back to military vehicles. Yellow Truck & Coach, part of which GMC was, started making six-wheel drive military trucks. Between 1941 and 1945, about 529,100 of these 2.5-ton jimmies were built in different lengths, configurations, and body styles, including cargo trucks, dump trucks, tankers, bomb transporters, and fire engines. An amphibious version of the DUKW, nicknamed the Duck, was developed in 43 days. It proved to be so good that over 21,000 copies were built and earned fame in combat. In total, GMC produced nearly 600,000 trucks for the U.S. Armed Forces. Once again, same as during World War I, the company stood up and proved itself useful for the country. In September 1943, GM bought out the assets of Yellow Truck & Coach and renamed it GMC Truck & Coach Division. When the war ended, GMC quickly got right back to work for consumers, improving their truck design with a wider and lower grille and integrated headlights. Post-war America prosperity was reflected in stylish new GMC Dream Trucks. Increased leisure time spurred sales of Suburbans, vans, pickup campers, motorhomes, and all types of off-road models. In the 1950s, GMC continued to draw influence from the car market and increase the comfort, safety, and performance of their pickups. By 1960, they had transitioned from producing commercial-use trucks to personal use with the introduction of the GMC Sierra, which was the GMC brand's first full-size personal-use pickup truck. The famous Jimmy name was resurrected to identify GMC's first real sport utility vehicle, which bowed in 1970. The big news for 1972 was the Sprint, which combined the features of a sedan with those of a pickup truck. GMC celebrated 75 years of design, engineering, and production innovation during its diamond anniversary in 1977. An advertisement noted that GMC employees were known as the truck people within General Motors. It said that the 1977 line offered models from half ton to three and a half tons in trucks for people, trucks for freight, trucks for fun. All kinds of trucks, basically. A new compact pickup called the S15 was GM's response to the imported mini pickup sales threat in 1982. The S15 Jimmy followed in 1983. GM's Safari van introduced in 1985 was another compact model described as a personal size, mid size people mover that's garageable. Funny description, actually. What is a car if not a people mover? New ruggedness and dependability was promised in an all-new CK full-size pickup that GMC launched in 1988. In 1981, GMC Truck & Coach Division became part of GM Worldwide Truck & Bus Group. Bus production ended in May 1987, and the division name was changed from GMC Truck & Coach to GMC Truck Division. The Canadian plant produced buses from 1962 until July of 1987. GM withdrew from the bus and coach market because of increased competition in the late 1970s and 1980s. Rights to the RTS model were sold to Transportation Manufacturing Corporation, while Motor Coach Industries of Canada purchased the classic design in 1998. GMC's official branding on the vehicles was shortened from GMC Truck to simply GMC to reflect expansion into the SUV and van market.
GMC continued to refine its products in the 1990s with aerodynamic styling enhancements, more efficient engineering, and high-performance trucks like the 1991 Cyclone. New model names were a trend, with the CK pickup becoming the Sierra, the S15 becoming the Sonoma, the Jimmy becoming the Yukon, and the Rally Vandura van becoming the Savannah. New Envoy and Yukon Denali models appeared. In a historic 1996 move, the GMC and Pontiac divisions were merged. Two years later, division headquarters were relocated to General Motors headquarters at the Renaissance Center in downtown Detroit. In 1999, Lynn C. Myers became general manager. In 2002, GMC celebrated its 100th anniversary and released a book entitled GMC – The First 100 Years, a complete history of the company. It seems like nowadays everyone writes a book about themselves, from celebrities to truck companies. Also, GMC can be called a celebrity of the car manufacturing world, can it? In 2009, GMC ended production of medium-duty commercial trucks after over 100 years. The 2000 to 2010 decade is also commonly known as the D decade for GMC, named for the introduction of the Duramax diesel engine and the Denali luxury trim. In 2020, General Motors announced the return of the Hummer nameplate, this time as a sub-brand of GMC instead of a standalone division. The Hummer lineup includes two models, an electric pickup truck and SUV, to be sold as the GMC Hummer EV. The new Hummer EV was revealed on October 20, 2020. After so many years, the company isn't only still successful, but it's still expanding. In 2022, the GMC brand was introduced in South Korea as a subsidiary of GM Korea. Among other things, GMC has a long and prominent history of platform sharing with Chevrolet. Beginning in 1920, GMC and Chevrolet trucks became largely similar, built as variants of the same platform, sharing much of the same body sheetwork, except for nameplates and grills, though their differences, especially engines, have varied over the years. GMC Advertising marketed its trucks to commercial buyers and businesses, whereas Chevrolet's advertising was directed towards private owners. Between 1962 and 1972, most GMC vehicles were equipped with quad headlights, while Chevrolet clones were equipped with dual headlights. The Platinum has been the most profitable for General Motors, as it was shared with the Chevrolet Blazer or GMC Jimmy, the Chevrolet Suburban, and the Chevrolet Tahoe or GMC Denali. In 1998, the platform was introduced as the Cadillac Escalade. In 1971, GMC marketed their version of the Chevrolet El Camino, which was based on the Chevrolet Chevelle. Called Sprint, it was virtually identical to the El Camino, and a sport version, the SP, was equivalent to the El Camino SX. It was renamed Caballero in 1978, and remained produced alongside the El Camino until its demise in 1987. In 1973, with GM's introduction of the new Rounded Line series of trucks, GMC and Chevrolet trucks became even more similar, ending production of GMC's quad headlight models and setting the standard for the Chevrolet GMC line of trucks for over 30 years. As of 2020, GMC's vehicles are marketed as more premium luxury vehicles positioned above similar vehicles from the more mainstream Chevrolet division. Chevrolet vehicles are priced lower than a comparable GMC, but GMC vehicles have features not found in a comparable Chevrolet. Today, GMC seems to have a good time. They are famous all over the world, coming up with new car models such as the brand new upcoming GMC Canyon AT4X and continuing to produce the older ones, keeping the company's reputation perfect. But this is the whole point of building a successful company, isn't it? Generally speaking, GMC has proved to be an incredibly important part of the commercial, the military, and more recently, the passenger vehicle industry throughout their over a century of history. In the future, GMC is set to continue its relentless quest for innovation and growth. Well, good luck with this.